you looked at humans, and one of the things you did when you were looking at humans was the exercise, right? So you had some people. Ex- so there was a couple of questions. So one is, why did you think exercising was going to increase taurine? I mean, wh- why did I, you include that experiment? We did not. Uh, we did not uh, uh, include it out of uh, the blue. Uh, the reason to include uh, exercise is that exercise is one of the best anti-aging intervention. So our goal here was to investigate in a best anti-aging intervention, does it regulate taurine metabolism correctly? Yeah. And that is why we put these uh, different uh, sedentary individuals, marathon runners, bodybuilders, and sprinters through a bout of exercise to see does taurine, does exercise increase taurine levels? And perhaps taurine could be a, a mediator in some of the health benefits of exercise. And that is what we noted, is that variety of taurine metabolites, including taurine, were increasing post-exercise in across different um, uh, spectrum of human um, muscle uh, um, groups, for example, sedentary subjects, bodybuilders, which uh, utilize. So there is a glycolytic versus non-glycolytic muscle utilization when you have a bodybuilder versus sprinters and marathoners, all of them taurine went up, NSTL taurine went up, and, and that uh, hypotaurine went up. So it tells us that taurine metabolism is affected by exercise and perhaps uh, uh, some of the health benefits of exercise are mediated by taurine. Were you able to see how long taurine levels remained elevated after the bout of exercise? We did not investigate um, uh, this notion because um, after exercise, um, taurine was increased mm. and its metabolites were increased. And taurine is quickly uh, taken up in the cells and whatever remains, whatever is not required is excreted out of the kidneys. So kidneys mm. remove any excess. And that is why if you look at it in literature, no as far as I can uh, find, there are no detrimental effect of taurine access reported because any access that is beyond ability of the cells to take is cleared from the body by kidney uh, excretion. Mm. Interesting. So how how good a kind of proxy for the, the amount of taurine you have is plasma taurine? Well, uh, that is a very important question. Uh, in my view, there are a lot of genetic, we have some evidences now that there are many genetic um, polymorphisms that are affecting the plasma or serum levels of taurine in healthy versus uh, individuals that have uh, health problems. Uh, and that, I think, will will be an important question going forward to investigate uh, how people's genetic makeup is affecting the plasma or serum levels of taurine. Mm-hmm. Because depending on these genetic backgrounds, we are outbred species. Humans are outbred um, for good because we generate genetic diversity and we increase the vigor. Mm-hmm. And that is why in inbred populations, you have precipitation of diseases. So many, many populations in the world are inbred, uh, localities which are inbred, and you have precipitation of these genetic diseases. So now these genetic polymorphisms will tell us what are the different, uh, across genome-wide, what are the different uh, genes that are contributing to taurine um, maintenance of a healthy state of taurine. And that is where, again, we do not know and there are a lot of questions. This this study has raised a hundred more questions than we out to answer. We we do not know what is the healthy range of taurine across different populations, and that is the the goal. Immediate goal for us is to define that healthy range. For example, for many molecules, we know healthy range. If you look at glucose, for example, a fasting glucose uh, beyond one hundred fifty um, um, milligram per deciliter would be um, bad. Mm -hmm. A fed glucose beyond uh, 250 would be bad. So we know this healthy range of different molecules. And our goal is now to define the healthy range of taurine across different ethnicities in order for us to define what kind of intervention we would require depending on the genetic makeup of the individual. 
So we are now diverging towards precision medicine here. Mm-hmm. Or a precision nutrition, actually. Not a medicine. It is not a medicine. It's a food. So precision nutrition. So we are diverging mm-hmm. ourselves in, in, in defining this healthy range. Perhaps mm-hmm. in some um, situations, there could be taurine resistance as well. For example, some studies have reported that obesity could be a, uh, depending on the genetic uh, background, could be a state of uh, taurine resistance. So taurine levels can be elevated in obese individuals. But these are the, there are more studies need to be done because those are observation studies. We need to have more mechanistic studies to, to investigate those processes. And humans are unique species, you know, we are outbred. Um, so it is going to take some time, in my view. Why is magnesium important? Magnesium plays many crucial roles in the body, such as supporting muscle and nerve function and energy production. To ensure that we have sufficient magnesium, my wife and I take magnesium breakthrough from bioptimizers. Do you know that there are two options to use magnesium breakthrough to support your health? I take magnesium breakthrough at night to help with muscle recovery, avoid cramps, and have more peaceful sleep. My wife takes one capsule in the morning instead, which she finds makes her more calm and focused at her work. One of the important reasons we chose Magnesium Breakthrough is it has the full spectrum of seven types of magnesium, and it's made with all natural ingredients, soy-free, gluten-free, lactose-free, non-GMO, free of chemicals and fillers. To support your wellness, simply visit magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern and use the code modern10 to get your magnesium breakthrough with a 10% discount. Thank you for your support. In, actually, in the exercise, but also in the association study, like you looked at taurine, hypotaurine, and n taurine. So, so can you explain what is the relationship between those three? So we looked at a variety of other ones. Uh, these were uh, associated with a variety of health parameters, and that is why they were presented. Uh, so hypotaurine is a precursor of taurine. It's just before taurine uh, is synthesized. And n style taurine is a downstream product produced from taurine. So we wanted to look at the, the series of events that happen in biochemically in the cells uh, hypotaurine, a precursor, what happens to taurine levels, what happens to anestyl taurine. So mm-hmm. if if an entire process is being dysregulated, you will see associations clustering together. And that is what we noted, that hypotaurine, anestyl taurine, and uh, taurine itself was a high taurine levels. Uh, humans with the high taurine levels um, were, were having less obesity, less BMI, uh, less type 2 diabetes, less hypertension, less inflammation. And that tells us that it is associated with the better health. High taurine levels in aged humans is associated with better health and a low taurine levels is associated with poor health. Uh, so it is association. And in humans, uh, you can only uh, tell association no matter we looked at 12,000 people 60 year olds but we cannot say that the, with what is causal here it is just association simple association yeah. yes so I, I looked at that graph uh, that table so it seemed to me that taurine was associated with higher LDL and ApoB although hypertaurine was associated with lower values for those is that did I read that correctly and what do you think is going on there? So, as I said, uh, the humans, we have only done associations. Right. Um, and um, one thing you, well, uh, one of the most um, striking image in that entire graph is the red box that you see with the mm. kidney disease. Mm. Yeah. And what what it tells us is that, that in the in people with kidney diseases, in fact, the renal excretion is compromised and taurine levels go up. So it was positively associated with kidney disease. Mm -hmm. And we think it is a reverse causation. Because these people had the kidney disease, they had high taurine levels. So so, uh, how do we define this entire spectrum at the present time uh, is uh, is a bit uh, in association... Uh, and not in a, in a causation manner here now. And that is why we are now formulating 
And as I said, across ethnicities, we have now partners, uh, clinical and uh, basic science partners in many countries now. And we are putting together a randomized placebo controlled uh, clinical trial to investigate uh, the effect of taurine supplementation uh, in different age groups on health parameters. And that is the goal, because then we can say, hey, now we supplement, we are able to see improvement in the health of these organs. Therefore, it is the causation here. Yeah. Because the levels were low. Yeah. I, I don't suppose the, uh, the Norfolk study had levels of um, exercise, activity levels. No, uh, okay. it, it is not uh, well defined uh, right. to uh, correlate those uh, levels, including that we did not have the dietary patterns uh, of individuals mm -hmm. and we did not have, as you said, uh, exercise uh, patterns because those are more of a, of a quote that people give. Uh, mm -hmm. A doctor asks, you, do you exercise? Yes. <laughs> And most people are tended to believe that they exercise, even if, yeah. um, for example, I, I, I cycle to office um, mm -hmm. from New Jersey. I come to New York on a daily basis. So I, I cycle on average one and a half hours per day. Mm -hmm. So I exercise. I can say I exercise six days a week, uh, except Sundays I don't exercise. And that is when my car gets utilized to do groceries. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we tend to believe many things we believe that mm. we do. Mm -hmm. And if I ask you, do you eat healthy? You say, yeah, overall I eat healthy. But that definition of overall is very um, gray. Mm -hmm. And more precise studies of dietary interventions, because even a vegetarian diet is healthy. Very many uh, studies have been done saying that vegetarian diet is healthy. Mm -hmm. However, at the same time, Vegetarian diets are pure vegetarian diets are deficient in many molecules, such as, for example, vitamin B12. Mm -hmm. And nutritionists need to now look at with the other studies coming up now, how to shape those uh, uh, dietary patterns in individuals. At the same time, if you look at non-vegetarian diets, red meat consumption. Uh, is also associated for long term. If you people consume, it is associated with many cancers. So now this is the there that is where we need to find a balance of uh, supplementation versus overconsumption of a particular diet. And nutritionist uh, would be the best uh, people now to look more closely of these molecules. In fact, our interest of uh, entire episode of this micronutrients started with vitamin B twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, that is where we started looking at how does B12, uh, which is only produced by some bacteria in ruminants like cows, uh, which gets absorbed into their bloodstream, gets absorbed into their liver and muscle. And then when we eat those non-vegetarian products, we get some level of those micronutrients. And, and these changes in micronutrients uh, during the spectrum of our life cycle, shape our physiology. And they are very important. There are micronutrients, essential micronutrients. In fact, some of them are essential. And those shape our, our physiology. And we need to look at the diets a little bit more closely mm -hmm. to see whether particular deficiencies need to be regulated or a particular excess need to be um, decreased of those uh, nutrients. So just thinking about translating to humans. Uh, so we did talk about converting the dose, right? And, and using allosteric um, conversion, it was like three to six grams per, well, grams for a mid-sized person. Uh, so I, I did talk to um, Dr. Bauer, Dr. Jo Joseph Bauer. Now he was questioning whether allosteric would be correct for Turin. Where, I, I just want, wondered what your thoughts on that would be. Could it be that you should actually do it just by weight, which would require really quite a large dose of taurine for it to be effective? Um, well, I, I tend to disagree. Okay. Um, the reason behind is that uh, based on my experience, I did my uh, PhD in uh, 
understanding uh, physiology in primates in monkeys so my phd was in monkeys uh, understanding physiology in cows and in in uh, rodent species so based on my knowledge of uh, changes in metabolite uh, physiology across different uh, organisms i think the allosteric conversions of molecules uh, is correct to the most part having said that we need to do the intervention in order to investigate mm -hmm. what kind of those doses would be and people have uh, done some clinical trials now for uh, for example uh, glycemic control with taurine um, uh, regulation of um, uh, oxidative stress with taurine uh, and regulation of uh, adiposity with taurine uh, in the long term and it it a dose of 1.5 to 3 gram uh, seems to have a beneficial effect on these uh, parameters so that suggests that perhaps it is the case for many other organ physiologies as well that suggests does not prove yeah that suggests so interesting if it's still six grams is still a pretty large dose right um absolutely so do we think it would be um it would scale by dose so would a lower dose confer some of the benefits or do you think there's going to be some kind of a threshold and it's like if you're below that then it just gets all eaten by the liver and excreted yeah so uh, that question would require uh, some level of investigations uh, a pilot study across different ethnicities as i said we do not know these healthy range of taurine mm. and we need to identify that range number 1 and number 2 how is taurine metabolism changing with genetic makeup of individuals in different diseases mm. and then only we can define that those uh, doses so a dose response study currently is in progression in humans to investigate what kind of doses uh, would we go forward in a large uh, clinical trial to uh, in humans across different ethnicities and we need to do a pilot dose response study looking at variety of health parameters in order to define that dose which will be effective across different ethnicities <laughs>